I would describe Fanbase Press by their tagline. It is celebrating fandoms and creating new ones. And what's interesting about Fanbase Press is that they're, they're kind of a, a yin and a yang. They are celebrating fandoms and creating new ones and you know pretty much everything that they do, whether it's publishing or doing interviews or podcasting, all of their interaction at conventions, everything, uh, everything that they do is really about celebrating the creative person. Fanbase Press is a independent publisher. They produce comics, they produce podcasts, they have uh, news articles. Hmm, Fanbase Press, um, how would I explain them? They do so much, it's hard to just get oh. it concise. My favorite thing that Fanbase Press puts out is the fact that there is sort of a spectrum of stuff that they put out. Um, they've got horror books, they've got uh, superhero books, they've got Archangel books, you know, and everything's done with uh, passion and heart. They really have a desire to um, to expose um, new creators to a wider group of, you know, fans. So, so on their press side, they're really great about celebrating anything you might be a fan of and really diving deep into that with articles, reviews. Plus, they do uh, an array of great podcasts. I think uh, Fanbase Press is very accepting of essentially anyone that loves comic books and, and, and there's the, the it feels like to me anyway the goal is to be accepting of anyone and everyone I love that I, I think that's great hi I'm Brian Dillon and I'm the uh, president and co-founder of Fanbase Press I'm Barbara Dillon I am the editor-in-chief and co-founder of Fanbase Press we have been uh, in business as Fanbase Press for eight years now uh, the company started uh, as a way for us to publish our own comics and graphic novels, we started as Fanboy Comics. And uh, over the years, uh, we found that we wanted to be, uh, we wanted outwardly uh, to appear as inclusive and welcoming as a company as we were in our morals, our efforts, our actions. So we actually rebranded a few years ago to Fanbase Press to be very clear about who we are, what we do, and what is important to us. So for the past eight years, we have been publishing comics and graphic novels. We have a geek culture website that does reviews, interviews, and podcasts. And above all, we love celebrating fandoms and creating new ones. The first book that we published was uh, Something Animal. It was a uh, horror graphic novel that is uh, hand-painted by artist Robert Burroughs. Uh, the story was co-written by myself and uh, uh, Fanboy Comics co-founder uh, Sam Rhodes and uh, it adapted a story by Sam's older brother, a short story uh, by the same title, uh, and that was by Ben Rhodes. Um, it's a vampire story. It's, a, it's sort of a resp in response to, uh, at the time in the short story, in response to the Anne Rice vampires. So instead of vampirism making you super beautiful or sexy or giving you superpowers, it's the reverse. It's, a, it's more like a terminal condition, slowly uh, eating away and um, really about a story about isolation and, and paranoia. And we kind of leave it up to the reader whether something supernatural is going on or it's more of a, a psychological uh, condition. Our first graphic novel was Something Animal, and the wonderful thing about the book was the response that it received. I think that for uh, a lot of our colleagues in the comic book industry who were putting out their own independently published comics, uh, they were perhaps more in the traditional art style that comics uh, are known for. However, with Robert Burroughs' art style, every single panel of the book was hand-painted and was so unique and so different from the other comics uh, that we were next to at conventions or that we had known through our associations in the industry that it really stood out. And I think that that's uh, what was so wonderful in the reception, both critically and fan-wise, is people were really drawn to the such a unique and vibrant style of art by Robert Burroughs. Following our first graphic novel, our second book was Identity Thief, and uh, it was written by Brian and uh, illustrated by Megan O'Keefe. And much like Something Animal, it was all hand-painted. Uh, Megan did such an amazing job with this graphic novel. Not only did she hand-paint, she used a, a slight bit of airbrush as well. Uh, but the book itself is about kind of a Twilight Zone-esque story. It's about a couple that moves into a new apartment. They find a mysterious hatch in the ceiling of their closet. Unfortunately for them, there may be something living in that hatch coming out at night with nefarious plans for the tenants. But uh, as I said, very much in the vein of Twilight Zone, Outer Limits, such a spooky story that especially when read in the dark is very <laughs> creepy. 
uh, after Identity Thief, uh, we followed with a story called The Arcs. Uh, this was uh, the first uh, fan base press uh, title that was basically an outside submission. Um, it didn't come from one of the creators. And uh, this was by uh, Michael Poison. Uh, I, Michael brought this fantastic idea to us about archangels battling uh, demons, but uh, Michael had uh, so many uh, cool mythological elements or, or new takes on the mythology and uh, uh, really cool um, characters that represented the different um, types or orders of angels. And uh, we were really eager to work with him. And uh, what was really special about that graphic novel is um, we had a bigger team than ever before. And the creative team uh, was fantastic. We, wor we worked with uh, several of them again and uh, people continue to uh, ask us when, when uh, more of the ARCs will be arriving uh, every time we're at a convention. After we published the ARCs, we had Penguins vs. Possums and uh, a fantastic comic book series by Sebastian Kedlecik, John Bring, and Lindsay Calhoun Bring. Hi, I'm John Bring. I am a writer and an illustrator on Penguins vs. Possums. Hi, my name is Sebastian Kedlecik, and I am the creator, one of the writers, one of the illustrators on Penguins vs. Possums. Hello, my name is Lindsay Calhoun Bring, and I am a writer on Penguins vs. Possums. Penguins vs. Possums is the age old tale of these two animal species who have been battling since the beginning of time, hidden in the shadows and kept secret until now. Their battle has gotten so big, it's starting to spill over. Humans are beginning to take notice, and it's all leading to the Battle of Armageddon, where ultimately humans like us are going to have to choose a side. The great thing about Penguins vs. Possums being added to our publishing line was it uh, was a book that uh, when people saw the book or the banner at a convention, they couldn't help but smile or laugh or show their friend. And that gave us a great opportunity at Fanbase Press to be like, hey, come, come over to the table, check out our other books. And uh, we're very lucky Penguins vs. Possums is way more than just uh, a gimmick that plays on, on the title. There's so many great characters and such a great story that um, once people opened up the book and saw what was in the pages, uh, they were very eager to check it out. Our next book after that was Fear Worm Selected Poems, uh, which was a horror poetry collection, very much in the vein of scary stories to tell in the dark, which I think many people from our generation were familiar, familiar with as children, yes. uh, except that these poems were horrifically terrifying <laughs> and very much for adults. Everything from Krampus the Christmas Demon to a cannibal clown convention. But uh, Bob's prose combined with his amazing artwork and the cover by Bill Sienkiewicz, we were so honored uh, to work with Bob. And what was the first big departure from the comics and graphic novels that we're used to publishing through Fanbase Press? So about five years into being fanboy comics at the time, as we were formerly known, uh, we started really wanting to redefine who we are as a company, both with who we are as people, what that means in terms of the books that we put out, and of course the, the morals and the, the mission of our company. And that's where we really decided to rebrand to Fanbase Press to be about inclusivity. Not that that wasn't always present, but that we wanted that to be very clear to anyone who heard our, our company name, knew the books that we were putting out. So I think that that uh, broadened and also uh, really defined who we are and what we do in the books we put out. And that really led to uh, the new books that we were putting yeah, out. Yeah, definitely. Um, we, uh, at the time, also so uh, uh, our co-founder with fam, uh, Fanboy Comics, Sam Rhodes, was uh, e exploring other ideas. He went into audio production. And so uh, Barbara and I uh, gratefully were left with uh, the company to take over. And um, we had a very specific direction, as Barbara mentioned, of uh, where we wanted to take it. And books like Kinsey, The Margins, some of the other titles that we haven't yet announced but are, have been being worked on for the last couple of years. Uh, really spoke to the direction we wanted to go with the company. And uh, as um, many people know, our, our tagline is uh, celebrating fandoms and creating new ones. And that was a really big part of the new direction of the company once we switched over from fanboy comics to fan base press. We very much felt like when we looked back at what we had done over those last five years, uh, the two things that we really felt were important were creating new stories that told uh, you know, elements that told stories about characters or, or from voices that you hadn't heard before, but also being a place where 
you as a member of geekdom could come and feel like there was a community that was fun and welcoming and and everything that you enjoyed you know had a place there so i think that uh discussing it with barbara and making some of these choices we really were able to find a real direction for the company and uh and streamline everything to uh, to what you see today. And part of with the rebrand calling fan base is we wanted it to be a safe place for people to discuss these mm -hmm. things and have opinions. Inclusive, diverse, all of those words apply, yeah. And I think a really big part of that uh, in the rebranding was bringing on Michelle Brittany as our editorials so. manager because we really wanted to up our game in the journalism aspect in that uh, as we were celebrating fandoms, we wanted greater, more in-depth and thoughtful editorials. We wanted to improve our, our podcast network, the reviews and the contributors uh, that we worked with or put out. Uh, we wanted to ensure that their writing was top notch, that it was also thoughtful and positive, uh, not for the sake of positivity, but for the sake that we as individuals believe that right. you know it's uh, putting negativity out is not for the sake of negativity is not helping anyone. We really want to encourage and help and hone other creators' work uh, through our creators' reviews. So we we really wanted to improve in every aspect of the company as we rebranded. Hi, my name is Michelle Brittany. I am the fan base press editorials manager. What I do is I develop editorial content for the online website of Fanbase Press. I do a lot more than that, but that's the basics. <laughs> After we rebranded, we had what we call our year of superheroes, and that consisted of three uh, graphic novels and or comic book series. The first was Hero Hotel by Yehudi Mercado, about a little boy who works at a hotel for superheroes, which sounds like an awesome <laughs> job, except those superheroes are total divas when they're on vacation. Uh, shortly thereafter, that was followed by The Gamma Gals, which is about three young women in high school who fight supervillains in many different ways. Uh, not only do they love playing role-playing games, fighting demons and orcs, but they have superpowers and must defend their city. Hi, my name is Stefan Terry, and I'm the creator, writer, artist of The Gamma Gals. I really wanted it to be a book about uh, really awesome, resourceful, um, powerful uh, women, um, because it's one of the things that um, I hadn't seen that much of in, uh, in comic books, especially in the non-sexualized variety, and uh, having conversations with my wife about uh, comic books, because she's a huge comic fan too, and one of the things that always comes up is representation and diversity. And uh, that kind of originated, you know, that was what originated the concept of the Gamma Gals. And of course we have Quince, which is our, our comic book series about a little girl who gets superpowers on her quinceanera, but she only has them for one year. My name is Sebastian Ketlicek, and I'm the creator of Quince. My name is Kit Steinkelner, and I'm the writer of Quince. And I'm Emma Steinkelner, and I'm the illustrator of Quince. We really uh, both pay homage to the superheroes who come before us, and absolutely, I think, playfully, subvert expectations. What makes Kinsa special to me is that it is such a personal story and that that it does deal with our culture and heritage and in a very positive way. That was something that was important was a very positive depiction of a family and of a young girl and that my nieces and other young girls like that can can see themselves in this comic book. and. Um, it's also really special because I think that only through these three people working on it does it reach its full potential. And I'm so excited by that and so thankful for that. So uh, next up would be The Margins, which we actually just released. Uh, we had a, a pre-release. Uh, it was available at San Diego Comic-Con. And uh, as soon as we got back was the official release. It's now available for sale. This one is a, a story that is similar to something like uh, never ending uh, story or uh, what lie in the witch and wardrobe. There's a uh, comic book artist who is uh, adapting an old manuscript and as she begins to create this comic uh, she realizes that her creation actually exists almost in a parallel uh, world. There is a, a fantasy realm that actually exists and she is tapping into it through her creation and it's a really interesting story that touches on uh, themes of gatekeeping, how creativity can be a, uh, a positive escape from the world, but also a, a negative way that you can isolate yourself from friends and family. And uh, it has just some truly fantastic characters, along with goblins, because, you know, you can't go wrong with those. Hi, my name is Amanda Donahue, and I am the illustrator on The Margins. 
So Fanbase is the first publisher I've ever worked with. Um, the Margins was my first, bro first book, and I could not have asked for a better group of people to work with. They have been nothing but kind and accommodating as I figured this whole uh, crazy adventure out. Um, Bryant and Barbara are just two of the best people to work with. And if you ever get a chance to work with them, whether it is as a writer, as an artist, or in some other form, I would say go for it. Uh, much like we did with Fearworm Selected Poems and really kind of reaching outside of our normal publishing style or, or type of book, uh, A Geek's Guide to Cross-Stitch Journeys in Space is our upcoming publication this October. Claire Thorne is bringing to life this wonderful celebration of geekdom and space exploration, which we hold near and dear <laughs> to our heart at Fanbase Press. So she is providing a way for crafters of all different experience levels to not only show or, or have an ability to act on their geekdom, but also to create something that is their own and to, to kind of display their own flair, their own sources of geekdom by way of space. Hi, I'm Clarissa Thorne, and I am a crafter and creator of the A Geek's Guide to Cross Stitch Journeys in Space book that is upcoming very soon for release. Well, A Geek's Guide to Cross-Stitch Journeys in Space is a cross-stitch, a collection of cross-stitch patterns uh, for pretty much all, you know, needle workers and crafters. It's, it's a very accessible book and it is all about space nerd and the love of space exploration. The book is A Geek's Guide to Cross-Stitch Journeys in Space and it is set for release on October 22nd. So uh, I think the first main, um, you know, push for it with fan base press will be at LA Comic Con, which is that following weekend. So looking forward uh, to what's to come for fan base press, uh, I think that we both have very uh, excited, positive feelings. You know, uh, we obviously don't want to uh, over talk ourselves, but I would say that it's been a, a very positive year for fan base press. We have a number of exciting titles that we uh, haven't announced yet, but we're super excited to share with everyone. If you've liked what you've seen before, uh, I think you're gonna be really excited for what's to come. And other than that, in just a general sense, I would say that we're at, at Fanbase Press, we're really excited about where geekdom is heading. I think that there are a lot of uh, rough waters that geekdom has gone through. We haven't, we haven't finished that. There are many rough waters to continue to go through, but I do think that there is a positivity and a love in geekdom that is really finding its its voice and starting, you know, different parties are starting to align. And I think more than just a celebration of, of pop culture and things that we love to buy action figures of or go to movies, uh, I think people are starting to realize um, how much uh, these icons or these stories can mean to us in regards to our own world and in regards to to values and morality, uh, morals that we hold in general every day when you're interacting with people when you're when you're talking with your friends or family when you're just outside living uh, life whether it's work or play so um, I think there's a lot to look forward to from both geekdom and fanbase press I think in these past years working with our staff our contributors all of the creators and just everyone at different companies and throughout the comic book industry that we've worked with We've been so grateful and fortunate to do so and to bring stories and opportunities and a platform for people to share their stories or to connect with characters or themes that are really important to them. I think for me, that is the most important thing that we've done with this company is provide a, a friendly, welcoming and inclusive space through which people can tell their stories and enjoy others because it is a tumultuous time. It is a challenging time. We have miles to go before we can all be safe and happy and doing what we love. So to provide a little corner of the universe where we can do that is such a grateful gift. My most favorite part about working with Fanbase Press is being able to work with Barbara and Bryant, who have been, they're always professional, they're always supportive, um, they always provide avenues for me in which to uh, explore myself personally, but also on a professional basis. My favorite thing about Fanbase Press is how supportive they are of creators. Um, and one of the things that I've always loved about them so much from a creative standpoint 
is that they have really great ideas, they um, do want to talk to you about the work, but ultimately uh, they leave the creative control in the hands of the creators. Uh, my favorite thing at Fanbase Press is how they go above and beyond for their comics and their creators. They never forget you and they always make you feel like a big winner. They find original material from creators uh, that allows them to have this, this outlet, to, to put it out into the world. And, and the stuff they've picked, um, it's not just fluff, it's not just superhero stuff, it's stuff that I think really matters to people and, and people really connect with it and, and enjoy. And on the publishing side, they are instrumental in getting new voices out into the world, um, supporting and celebrating their creators and making sure that these books get seen by people. Uh, you know, to be honest, I just really love the content on the website. Um, you'll find reviews of, of comic books and movies and, and other properties that you wouldn't necessarily find anywhere else. And they're very hardworking. Um, they're great role models. You can tell how much... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. Probably how incredibly like supportive Barbara and Brian are and how like positive and upbeat and energetic and enthusiastic they are about um, just comics and interacting with their fans and people that love comics and you know like-minded people. I'm happy to have been with them for the three years and I'm looking for many more years with them in the future.